Good evening, everyone. Hello. Thank you for joining us. I am Donna Lynn Hilton, producer for Good Speed Musicals, and welcome to my home office. Uh, we have a treat for you tonight. I know I say it every week, but it's just true. Um, before we get going, let me remind you that if you have questions for me or for our guests tonight, you can enter them uh, in the Q&A section on your screen to the right, or you can text them to 860 seven one five seven and we'll try to get them into the chat i'm really excited for you to meet our guests tonight and to hear about their work um kalani cuepo is a writer and actor who has appeared on regional stages all over the country including here at goodspeed he was in our terrace theater production of glimmer glass many years ago he can be seen in the oscar nominated terrence malick film the world the New World, and Spielberg's Emmy Award winning Into the West and Slow West, as well as on multiple series. Uh, Ancestorize, a short film written and directed by Kalani, screened at nearly 40 festivals and won multiple awards, including the Rhode Island International Film Festival's Directorial Discovery Award. Kyle Pucha is a platinum-selling songwriter and composer and musician. His Kids in Love debuted at number one on the Billboard's Top Dance Electronic Albums chart. Kyle earned a Swedish Grammy nomination in 2018, and his songs have charted on Billboard's Top 40 Hot Dance Club play charts. Not a play chart I listen to a lot, admittedly. Uh, Kyle has composed dozens of scores from Microsoft and T-Mobile commercials, and he's garnered song placements on many TV shows and films, including Pretty Little Liars, Legacies, Love Island's Yes to Key in the Vineyard, and he's music directed and or done vocal arrangements for TV and musical theater. Please welcome my guests and my two newest friends, Kyle Pooch and Kalani Cuepo. Hello. Hi, guys. Hi. How are you? Amazing. Great. I don't see Kyle right now. Ah, Kyle, you there? I see Hey, you. there he is. There yeah. he is. <laughs> I've got things going on here on my screen. There he is. Okay, good. I could see him. Welcome. Thank you so much for having us, Donald. Thank you for it's joining me. It's really been a, a treat to get to know you two guys. Um, so before we start talking about the work, uh, how are you both? Where have you been riding out this pandemic? What's your pandemic world been like right now? Kyle, we'll let you go first. Sure. Um, well, I've been uh, sequestered uh, at home solo for several several months now. Um, and I've been working from home. Uh, I uh, do a lot of writing. I've, I've had some songwriting sessions. Um, I'm also a vocal coach. Um, I've transferred all of my my vocal clients to uh, uh, to have digital lessons now. Mm -hmm. So so I'm working out of my home. Uh, luckily, I have a a yard with a garden, so I'm I'm at, at least out and about among uh, my <laughs> my flowers and plants. <laughs> and there's one right there over your head too. So <laughs> yes. <laughs> How about yeah, you, Connie? You're in you're in LA too, right? Yes, I'm in Los Angeles, and just like Kyle, I am, you know, somewhat isolated. Uh, I do make it to the park every day for some exercise because I realized I have to um, have, you know, have that exercise and have that fresh life. And been doing a lot of creative stuff, um, a lot of songwriting, a lot of things that you, um, you know, you you would hope you would do when you use it as an excuse that you don't have time. And so when you you have less distraction, so and I've really uh, embraced this digital world. I've done a couple of readings for um, other people's new plays, uh, and it's been entirely on online in yeah. virtual reads like on Zoom and Streamyard like this. So it's been a really really cool time. I think it's a really great moment for us to pause and take inventory. You know, and so I think that's what's really been happening. It happens physically, like you literally are taking inventory of like what's in your closet, what's around you, what's what is what is really needed. And I think that on so many levels, I've been looking at what are my needs, what's important to me. And when you remove something like social interaction, then you realize, oh right, that's probably the most important thing that I need. So I try to connect with my art. And I get to, you know, work with people like Kyle. So it's, we still, you know, it's not exactly the same because we usually spend so much time in the same room together working on something, but we make that happen. So overall, it's been a really, um, really challenging time, meaning it challenges me to really rethink 
all the things that are really important. So I've kind of made this mental inventory list yeah. and 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 find the gratefulness and the gratitude for all the things is, that we do. Have. It is really true that out of this this crisis has come a lot of opportunity. We've tried here at Goodspeed to to really mm. embrace that. Um, and I have found that much of the work that we're doing virtually like this is. Um, it's different, but it's just as satisfying and just as productive as as some of the face to face that we do. And some of the readings that I've been attending, you know, I may not have been able to make if I had had to get into New York to see them. But, you know, I can take an hour and a half, two hours. And I watched a reading yesterday while I made biscotti in the kitchen, you know, oh. and it was and I loved the show and it was a great experience. So so a little over two months ago, we didn't know one another. Um, but I serve on the sounding board for the Rhinebeck Writers Retreat. Shout out to, to Rhinebeck and Kathy Evans. The founder, love it. Yeah, the founder of <laughs> Rhinebeck Writers Retreat, who is a good friend and colleague from her days as the executive director at the National Alliance for Musical Theater. Um, and so I serve on her sounding board, reading and, and um, participating in the selection of the projects. And um, that's how I first heard about Missing Peace. I enjoyed very much um, my, my review of it during that process and uh, Missing Peace was selected for a Rhinebeck re residency this year, which will be happening, happening virtually. They're happening virtually this summer. Um, and I thought my work was done. No. <laughs> and then I got a phone call from Kathy. <laughs> and then I got a phone call from Kathy. So you guys take it from there. Well, I mean, we saw that you were on the list and we, um, Asked Kathy if you if she thought there was any chance that you would say yes, and she said, "Well, we can ask." And we were so delighted uh, when you said yes. We were just gleeful, um, and it's already been such an extraordinary ex experience. And getting your insights and and your notes has has already proven invaluable. And Kalani and I haven't even started our week um, of writing yet for the festival. Well, thank you for that. It's it's a piece that it's really easy to, um, it's in, the, the show is in great shape. And so from from where I sit, it was really easy to look at it really carefully and to really engage in, in what um, what the opportunities to take the show to the next level were. Um, and I'm just really thrilled to have found you and to have found it. Um, okay. So we've had two conversations about the show. I feel like I know it pretty well at this point. Um, but let's introduce Missing Peace to our audience. How did the show come about and what is it about? Well, uh, you know, Kyle and I, we had worked together. We actually um, first met at Native Voices Theater um, working on a, a new project there. And so we've since then we've worked together like on Ancestor Eyes, my short film that um, that you had mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. And so he called me one day and he had a, um, a part of his dream board he had on his list um, to write a, a Native American musical. So he contacted me and asked me if I would be interested. And I'll never live this down. I said no. <laughs> I, um, and I had great excuses. You know, I was busy. I had a lot, of, um, a lot of momentum that was happening with my acting career. And I thought I simply didn't have the time to do that. So that was probably the biggest lesson that I learned. So we got together. And um, and I brainstormed uh, with Kyle in in our very first session that we brainstormed. I had an idea for missing piece, and you know I told him I said, listen, it's kind of wild, it's it's pretty cool, and I won't be hurt if you say no. So just hear me out. Mm -hmm. Immediately, we started riffing, and basically just the story just started coming alive, and and these characters started appearing, and and we just, we literally started writing right away. And so we, we ended up um, creating the piece and, and you know, asking friends to, to read through with us. And then we had our first writer's retreat with Native Voices Theater, which is the, the actual theater here in Los Angeles um, that, um, that was conceived by Randy Reinholz and Gene Bruce Scott. And this is where Kyle and I first met. So we got our first writer's retreat um, a year ago where we were able to have access to um, extreme, extremely uh, talented native actors and everything that we needed, we could play with and work with. So we had a dramaturg, a director, a musical director, um, and, 
and an entire week to really work our butts off and craft this story. So that's how we got together. And that brought us to this point where we were very fortunate to get the um, Rhinebeck yeah. Writers Retreat and to be able to be introduced to you. And, you know, you were you were the the big dream because we were like, we looked at the list and we were like, Donald and Hilton. And, you know, <laughs> it's it's such a great it's such a great lesson, you know, because you think, you know, here we have this heart project that is small and intimate and and um, uh, with unproduced uh, writers. And we thought, or I know I did for me, sometimes you limit yourself and you think, oh, that's too big to start off. Why don't you be reasonable? And this was a really great example where we were unreasonable and we thought, ask for what you want, just like yeah. the spirit of the peace, dream big. And the, the worst they tell you is no. And you said yes. The speaks for itself. It was easy to say yes to that. So Kyle, what's the show about? Um, well, the show is about um, a young native man named Chase. He wakes up um, out of a coma and um, he's surrounded uh, by his family. Um, the only problem is that he uh, he's lost his memory. Um, but to his family's surprise, um, he, his personality is um, much different than it was when he um, uh, went, before he went into the coma. Um, he's lighthearted, he's charismatic. All of a sudden he uh, is able to play the piano, which is sort of shocking to them. And um, it's basically the story about Chase sort of remembering uh, the, 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 the dark, um, past that he has had and um, uh, remembering that he actually uh, went into the coma because he tried to kill himself. Um, and as the memories start to flood back in, um, he and his, his family members, um, including uh, his ex-wife, um, he has a nine-year-old daughter with his ex-wife, um, Logan, um, who we sort of find out uh, through um, the process of things being uncovered uh, that he also had a relationship uh, within his past. Um, it, it becomes a healing uh, process for not only Chase, but for all of his family members. Um, and uh, in the process of that, he, oh, whose pup is that? Um, he, uh, <laughs> he, he, he realizes that the past is the past and, and um, what we, we have control of is, is today and that we can make positive uh, choices and, and uh, loving choices in the moment. I think that's one of the reasons that it appealed to me so is that it, it takes a very real heartbreaking situation, but uh, lessons are learned and it, it is ultimately a really uplifting story. It's very real, it's very human, and yet ultimately completely uplifting. And I think that's one of the reasons it resonated so for me. So- and we are, and we, we, Very quickly, we also really wanted to touch upon um, the horrible truth of, uh, of suicide in um, young Native Americans. Um, uh, it is such a disproportionately high um, um, problem in, in Native American communities. And, and we really wanted to address that as well. Yeah. Um, so you brought along, I think we're gonna share three pieces of the show with our audience tonight. Um, you wanna set up the first song we're gonna hear, which is Busy Myself? Sure, you know what, I'll introduce it. Okay. Um, this Busy Myself is a song that Logan sings and Logan is is Chase's best friend who happens to be the head nurse at this community health center, this hospital that that Chase wakes up from in the uh, from his coma. And this is a this song is a moment where we get a glimpse into Logan, who is a list maker. He's a rule follower and he's loyal to a fault. And so we get a glimpse into his innermost thoughts with this song. Great. Thank you.
I'm the one that people tell the secrets always safe with me, but I don't give that to myself. I keep my secrets under lock and key. Stolen moments, a glimpse of joy. I get too close, I touch your face. I let time stop, I feel the void. But I know better, yes I know better. I can't engage. Cracks in the pavement where the darkness shows. My heart starts to crumble, so my body says go. These thoughts are here to stay, so I busy myself. The feelings move away when I busy myself. Everything's gonna be fine. No, I don't need. This is how I find my way. I just busy myself. I just busy myself. I'm like a ticking time bomb, always on overload. Watch me control myself while everybody else explodes. I'm like a ticking time bomb, always on overload. Watch me control myself while everybody else explodes. These thoughts are here to stay, so I busy myself. The feelings move away when I'm busy myself. Everything's gonna be fine. No, I don't need your help. This is how I find my way. I just busy myself. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Wow. A beautiful song and a beautiful performance. Thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. How do you guys write? Everything together, right? Book, music, lyrics, all together? Yeah, everything together. Um, I have found, um, I, I just love the, the synergy of that. I love that, you know, we're doing it all together. So it, it feels much more organic um, and, uh, I don't know. It just really works for us. Don't you agree, Kalani? I do. It's it's really a lot of fun. You know, time gets away with us when we <laughs> when we work because we literally it's 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 like we set up our writing process in our very first brainstorming session. It was literally how it happens. And we literally just play, you know, like there's this idea of 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 bringing that play back into it where we just play with different ideas. And all of a sudden it's like. I think I hear a song, and then we're right. all of a sudden we're writing a song. Then we just know, walk and, to the piano and sit down yes. and start writing. It does sound. I mean, the so every song I've heard a lot of the score now, maybe all of it at this point. Yeah, so, all yeah. of it at this point. <laughs> and it they they're just they do seem to flow so so beautifully. I can see that in in the way that the songs um, come off the page. So thank you so much. All right, uh, now we have uh, Kyle. You're going to have to set up happy song because it's Kalani. Okay, Kalani. so. This happens um, near the beginning of the, the, the piece. Um, Chase doesn't remember much, um, but he has this wonderful, uplifting humor about him. Um, and he notices that Logan, the character who you just heard singing, um, he's a, a little serious. And um, uh, he just has this impulse that he wants to get Logan to lighten up a little bit. And um, this is <laughs> this is how he does it. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> when you start your day, you start the caffeine drip. It's like every other morning when you take another sip Never deviating from the same routine You throw on that old t-shirt and those same old faded jeans But here comes the easy part Reach in your drawer behind the socks There's cheetah prints and polka dots You rock it with your Nike neon shoes Cause happy looks good on you Whoa, you know, happy looks good on you. Whoa, you know, 
Happy looks good on you. Just a drop in the ocean, just a spoke in the wheel. You cycle through the motions, every day's the same old deal. Stuck in your to do list, never crossing through it. For every one you scratch away, you're adding three more to it. Go paint yourself a pink sunrise with golden glowing fireflies. Choose any color, anything but blue. Come on, I've seen you smile. Happy looks good on you. Whoa, you know. Happy looks good on you. Whoa, you know. White's all I've ever known. It chose me. Didn't choose my own. What fits you wasn't tailored for me. Bright or loud, pink or golden rod, you're allowed to choose the fit you want. Cause happy looks good on you. So cast away that crumbled list. Go rock a frock. You get the gist. Find who to be. Forget the what to do? Yes, you got it. Happy looks good on you. Whoa, you know. 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 Happy looks good on you. Beautiful, beautiful, good job. People are dancing. We're getting getting lots of positive comments about okay. the music and the performances. Thank Kalani, you. Kalani, so I'm so tickled by your um your robot choice. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's my favorite. I had to do something. Kalani, <laughs> it's my favorite. And the, and the attorney this <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's great. Um and so one of our viewers nailed this, and it's, I think, one of the reasons that I got so excited about the show, the further I got into it, completely original musical, your original story, uh, not based on something. And, you know, we just see, those of us who see new musicals in development all the time just love to see that. So, yeah, thank you, Danielle, original storytelling, thanks, you know. So you. You, can you talk just a little bit about that? Did Was there ever a moment where you thought you might adapt a story and, and discovered, no, this is this is the story we want to tell because? Yeah, initially um, uh, I had the idea that I wanted to write something around the whole Dakota pipeline um, situation that that happened. That's that's when we started. And Kalani, uh, you know, uh, based on exactly what you're you're saying, Donna Lynn, Kalani said, you know, I think a lot of, he said a lot of my friends are already creating pieces around that. And I think um, it's, there, there are gonna be a lot of people writing about that. So um, it was really Kalani who, who pitched this, this extremely personal, like very, small story, which I love, like, you know, like um, um, Fun Home, uh, you know, those those musicals that really feel so, so intimate, but there's mm -hmm. something that that is extremely universal about them as well. Um, and um, I'm just thrilled that Kalani um, had this wonderful idea on on the treadmill at his, at his gym. <laughs> it's true. Kalani, in in preparing for this work, you've actually made contact with a, a health center in um, Coeur d'Alene, correct? Yes, correct. Yeah. Do you know, you know, the, the interesting thing is with Native Voices Theater, um, the, years ago, I had gone on a um, youth mentoring program, the Young Native Playwrights, that took place in Coeur d'Alene. And that was my first exposure to it happened many years ago and we were working with the kids and it was just, there was something that was really special about that time in my life and about being there and staying in these cabins that were right on the lake. And that always really stuck with me. And so very recently, um, 
Randy Reinholz, the um, artistic director, who he's just passed the torch on to Delana Studi, he um, he brought me up to Idaho to sort of revisit. So I got to visit uh, the the health center, the Marin Health Center, where we got to sit down with one of the um, directors there and got to really hear a lot about not just the service that they're doing for the community, but specifically with Coeur d'Alene people and 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 all the issues that we sort of touch on in the play and then we were also able to go to uh to one of the local um high schools or middle school high school combination and the the principal just welcomed us with open arms gave us a tour and there were connections that were made from from people that i were i was talking about with at the health center and also there and then I also got to really connect with the landscape. And that was the thing that Randy really said because he was there from the beginning of the piece. And he said, mm -hmm. I really want you to remember the landscape and how that affects the uh, your piece, which is stunning because, you know, our piece is very, um, it's very intimate. You know, we wanted something that, that almost felt violating. Like, like I, I want people to, lose themselves as an audience member and feel like, I don't know if I should be listening to this. I don't know if I should be eavesdropping on this conversation, you know? Because well, the two pieces we've shared so far today have been very much in the lighter, totally, in the lighter yeah. spirit of yes. the show. But there, there, there is, as you say, this this man has tried to take his own life. And it, there's so there is a lot of um, darkness for the whole family, for his whole intimate collection in the piece. Um, yes. it's all very and I, real. And I think ultimately, Donna Lynn, I think this is a play about second chances. You know, mm -hmm. Kyle and I really wanted to explore the idea of what happened if you woke up one day and nothing else in your past mattered. And you had a second chance to look at all the relationships, all the mistakes that you think you made. And you had a chance to talk to these people. You had the chance to speak on it. And you had a chance to look at it with a second chance and that's what that's that's what's been that's what's been so gratifying mm -hmm. to explore that idea of of regrets the idea of the fantasy of being able to fix something that you broke and sometimes it's yourself yeah. you know so your Rhinebeck retreats coming up in early August about a month away um, we've talked a lot about what your what your what your plans are, but so for our audience, what are your priorities for the Rhinebeck week? Uh, I mean, two things immediately pop into to my mind. One is um, uh, as echoed by uh, you, Donna Lynn. Um, we really want to explore more opportunities for for the Native American culture and symbolism and spiritualism to be woven uh, uh, throughout the piece. Um, uh, uh, interestingly, uh, the, the Kalani is going to do a monologue in a bit, and um, that's one of the, the few places that we feel like, okay, this is, we want to we want to expand on this and, and let it feel like it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an integral part of, of the piece, uh, the fabric of the piece. Uh, ultimately, I really want to um, take the score and infuse um, uh, uh, a lot of um, indigenous instrumentation um, so that, so that it's represented in the music as well. Um, and then, uh, another thing that, that we really want to explore is um, how to make this theme of, of, of suicide um, becomes, become inspirational. So, you know, so that uh, one of the things that we talked about is that Chase, um, at the end of the, the piece, realizes that, um, you know, his purpose is to help other native, uh, especially native youth to, to uh, make a, another decision before um, contemplating suicide. So uh, it's an important theme that I think we want to, we want to, we want it to have a, 
an end that feels inspiring and hopeful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's a there's a comment in the in the thread. So much of the story is in the land, which I think is probably mm. a really good segue oh, to the monologue, yeah. perhaps. Sure. So, want to set that right. up for us? Yes. Uh, this is um, this is a story. You know, as Chase's memories come back, um, th this is at a point in our story where we start to see things really solidifying for him and he's starting to find clarity and he's starting to figure out what he wants to do with, with those. So he's still in the hospital and then he's talking to Logan. And so um, Kyle's going to read um, Logan's um, part and then also some stage directions so that you understand what's happening in the middle of the scene as the um, stage transforms. When I get out of here, I want to go down to the lake. Would you come with me? Sure, but it's a little cold for swimming. I don't want to swim. I want to go there after dark, when all the night creatures are singing their songs and the stars are reflecting in that magic lake water. That would be nice. I'll tell you stories about the stars. I know all about them. I know you do. From my grandfather. Your grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> At least I'm remembering everything correctly. Let's transition as Chase gets out of bed and walks toward a campfire that comes up from the stage floor. Did I ever tell you the story of the great snow goose? No. Come. Sit. Logan joins him at the fire. So the Salish story goes. Behind them, archaic hieroglyphic characters come alive as they're etched into the side of a rock formation, acting out the old story. Live native instruments and traditional vocables accent Chase's story. There were three brothers who were the first humans to ever come upon the sacred lake. They saw that all the colors of the world were held in that magic water. It mirrored the dancing trees along the shoreline and echoed the sounds of all the creatures who called it their home. Suddenly, the most majestic creature of them all, the snow goose, elegantly landed in the middle of the lake, causing the ripples to lap up on the sandy shores the three humans stood upon. Without hesitation, one of the brothers raised his bow as a second brother protested, no, this place is sacred. We must show respect to the waters and all that live here. This alerted the snow goose, who immediately flew away. But the hunter hit his mark, piercing the heart of the beautiful bird. His massive wings turned red and limp as he fell from the sky and disappeared deep into the water. Everything became still and quiet. The only sound was of the voice of the hunter who cried, what have I done? They all watched the lake turn icy black as all the colors drained away. The hunter cried. He had killed the most beautiful creature he had ever seen. Every tear that hit the water caused a ripple and called up to the stars. They reflected strong in that water, those tears. Those stars reflected and shined brighter than they ever did before that very night. They were welcoming the spirit of that beautiful bird as he rose to the sky. The three humans watched as that great snow goose spread its massive wings and took his place near the Milky Way, forever showing the way. Beautiful. Just beautiful. <laughs> so beautiful. Oh my goodness. Just magnificent. All right. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Uh yeah. Yeah. And that's the yeah, you know, that's the spirit of the piece that I think you're right to um that's the energy that I think is really a strength to play into in this next phase of re revision. So uh, we have a question. Daver812 wants to know if the play has changed much since the reading in San Diego. Dave ah. Rossi, sorry. Thank you, Dave. Hey, Dave. 
Um, it it hasn't yet, but we're going into um, what? When is our week, Kalani? August second, August second through the tenth. Right. So we'll be focusing that entire week um, on uh, rewrites. Yes. So we're, we're sort of like planning, like we're meeting with Donna Lynn, who has been very generous with her time. And we're conspiring to really <laughs> maximize our time. You know, that that's how yeah. Kyle and I are. Like we really, this, this piece means a lot to us. And, you know, it was all born out of heart. So we just use our heart to, to lead us and say, okay, what do we need to do to make it the best we possibly can, you know? And it always comes with the support of so many people. You have to have people champion you, you know? Donna Lynn is championing us. Kathy Evans at Ryan Beck is championing us. Native Voices Theater has championed us. Elise Dewsbury has championed us. So yes. the list goes on and on. And so I think for us, there's always that sense of urgency where we want to approach this piece with everything we got because there's a lot of people counting on this. They want to see this story be told in a in a great way, in a good way, you know. And so, the 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 very least we can do is work our butts off. So that's what we <laughs> that's that that's always our plan. It's like okay, how can we really keep this momentum going and and you know because at the heart of it, you know, I think the spirit of the piece. There's, there was a lot of a lot of storytelling, which is the spirit of, of you know, the oratory um, legacy that Native people have. And so we had to really think about how can we use this convention of storytelling, of how things came to be, how we came to be, how can we use this, this convention in a way that's going to be engaging for an audience in a way that can that can partner with music and weave so that somebody can sing about it, that people can come to um, moments of, of truths, of moments of truths with, it, with, with each other. So it's, it's been a, a real challenge. And, and I think most of all, Kyle, there've been so many times you're like, how are we gonna do this? Like, is <laughs> this is this conventional? And we're like, who cares? Let's <laughs> dream big. And we just do it. And, and so We're basically far, everything... writing our, our Broadway, our Broadway <laughs> yes, production. Always, always. Well, I think you're well on your way to accomplishing all the goals that you've shared. Honestly, I, I just, I'm so excited about the piece and honored really to have been asked to participate in it in any way. And I really appreciate you making yourselves available tonight so we could introduce it to our audience. So thank you both so much sure. for being with us. Don't go away yet. Um, right. I wanna say thank you to our guests who have joined us tonight uh, here at Goodspeed. We have not given up on new work during our um, response to the COVID pandemic. And uh, we feel it's so important to keep this uh, exceptional new work in front of our audience and to continue to connect with the writers who are doing this really hard work and are the lifeblood of our industry, truly. We're taking next week off. Um, and, then we'll, and then through the summer, we'll be on alternating Thursdays in the home office. We'll be back in two weeks on Thursday, July 16th. We'll feature another development organization uh, live and in color, which actually is based right here in our own backyard in Salem, Connecticut. And we'll learn about Little Girl Blue, the Nina Simone story by Le uh, Michelle Leona. So we're excited about that. Uh, to the many of you who have been with us tonight to have helped Goodspeed during this crisis by turning your ticket refunds into contributions, thank you. If you want to do more, visit goodspeed.org. Thank you so much for being with us. Kyle and Kalani, thank you. It's an honor to share your work with our audience. And I really look forward to seeing what's next thank and what comes so out of your, your week in August. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, thank you, guys. Darling. Take care. Be well, everybody. Thank you.